hello and welcome everyone to our midday briefing um, today following um, the college meeting. Um, I'll start with the readout, obviously. President Juncker and the commissioners, of course, used the occasion to catch up. And they also had a general discussion on current affairs, including an update um, on latest events under the Helms-Burton Act. Then uh, they moved on to Brexit, also current events, as we know. So President Juncker debriefed the college um, on his recent contacts with Prime Minister Johnson, and then the Commission's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, provided um, the college with a state of play on the political developments uh, in London. He informed commissioners about recent contacts at technical level with the UK's Sherpa, David Frost, and uh, technical talks uh, will shortly start with uh, him here in the Commission. And then uh, he recalled that it's the UK's responsibility to come forward with concrete proposals uh, that are operational and that are also uh, compatible with the withdrawal agreement. In addition to this, the College adopted today its sixth communication on no deal preparedness. Uh, this is the Commission's final call on all EU citizens and businesses to prepare for a possible no deal scenario in just eight weeks' time. And we have published today also a checklist uh, to businesses uh, for making their final preparations ahead of the UK's withdrawal um, that should also be soon available in all EU languages, by the way. Then uh, the Commission also proposed to make targeted technical adjustments to the duration um, on the EU's contingency measures in the area of transport, fisheries and the EU budget. Uh, and finally, we also propose today to make the European Solidarity Fund and the European Globalization Adjustment Fund available to support businesses, workers and member states most affected uh, by an audio scenario. Um, and then also to recall that if EU citizens have any questions on how to prepare for a no-deal scenario, they can contact the Europe Direct uh, call centre uh, that is free of charge from anywhere in the EU, in any EU language, uh, and hours of operation will again be extended around the foreseen um, date for the Brexit, so around the 31st of October. The Commission has also set up today a call centre for member state administrations, giving them rapid access to the expertise uh, of the Commission services by establishing a direct channel of communication, also for the purposes to uh, facilitate the necessary coordination between national uh, um, authorities. So all the material uh, is available online now, and we will have a technical briefing shortly with all our experts from the different areas uh, for those accredited journalists here who would like to attend. And that will follow immediately after the readout. Uh, the College has already taken decisions on the registration of four citizens, European citizens' initiatives. Three were favourable. Actions on the climate emergency uh, and farmers towards a bee friendly agriculture for a healthy environment. The third one, stop corruption in Europe at its root by cutting off funds to countries with inefficient judiciary um, systems after deadlines. And the fourth initiative will not be registered because the measures which have been requested do not fall within the Commission's remit according to the European treaties. This is ensuring common commercial policy conformity with EU treaties and compliance with international law. You have a press release setting out all the details, which is available online. The College also uh, decided to appoint Mr. Elmar Brock as special advisor to the President on relations with Ukraine uh, because of his expertise, obviously, in, the air, in this area. And this decision takes uh, immediately effect, and the position will not be remunerated. Um, then not as part of the college readout, I would still like to share with you that um, a letter that President Juncker uh, signed and sent jointly with President Tusk yesterday to the new Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Oleksiy Honcharuk. Uh, and in the letter, the President congratulated the Prime Minister warmly for his appointment and added, and I quote, you can also count on our continued steadfast support to Ukraine's independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. The European Union remains 
committed to supporting a peaceful solution to the conflict in the east of Ukraine and the affected communities uh, and is unwavering in its non-recognition of the illegal annexation of, Crimea, of the Crimean Peninsula. The letter is available on President Juncker's Twitter account. Finally, uh, also I'm happy to update you on um, the forest uh, fire situation where in response to Bolivia's request for assistance uh, last week, the EU civil protection mechanism has been um, activated and is organizing extensive assistance to assist the Bolivian authorities in battling those forest fires. Uh, and this is where we are. France notably has offered 40 firefighters supported by a team of six experts from the French civil protection as well as four drones and operating personnel. Additionally, uh, the EU civil protection team composed of seven experts from France, Spain, Denmark will also travel to Bolivia, along with a liaison officer from uh, the EU Emergency Response Coordination uh, Center, and all the teams will be deployed on the ground in the coming days. In addition, the EU's emergency Copernicus satellite service continues to provide maps in the areas hit by forest fires. Um, and uh, for your information, by the way, it has also been activated for the Hurricane Dor Dorian. So we stand ready, as always, to provide further assistance to the affected countries in the wider region. And more information is in the daily news of today. These were my college readout uh, announcements. Let me see before we move to the technical briefings with all the colleagues waiting if you have maybe questions that uh, we can still answer from the podium that you need on the record, Jim.